Hello, John Neal here. Ah. Well, welcome. Um, oh, it's grim here in the UK. It's uh, grey. It's not cold actually, but it's uh, grey and damp. But um, yeah, there's all sorts going on. We're in lockdown as well, which makes it no better. Um, let me come to the point. There's my American flag. Yes. Um, uh, the American election, election has taken place for the presidency. Uh, we're at now on the 9th, Monday the 9th of November 2020. And, um, yeah, I just want to talk about unity. I'll come clean right at the start. I'm going to talk about unity, why I believe it's important and where I think it comes from, this concept, which is being missed out in so many aspects of our lives nowadays. In 1972, I was in America for three months. It's quite a long time. In the summer, I was working in a summer camp in Connecticut. It was um, a Jewish camp. I say Jewish, run by Jewish people from New York. And so most of the kids were from a Jewish background as well. Um, they were all white. Uh, there were two um, men of color and they were the cooks actually. And the food was great. Uh, I'd never been abroad before. Um, I had not, I'd not, never been abroad before. I was just 21, I was at college, and through the summer, I worked out that I could work in a summer camp, which is brilliant. So I went there, and uh, one of the things that struck me about the organization of the camp was that um, every day, the, uh, the kids would gather together under the flag hand on heart and pledge allegiance to the flag and to God. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. This is so in your face, really, of what they were trying to do. Um, and I think it, uh, there must be some unifying factor required to make the youngsters believe in this United States of America, this one place which is America. Is it because it's falling apart? and they've got to make an extra effort to bring it together. We would never really do this in, in Britain. Um, we have a national feeling, it's true, but we don't prime it in such a, a way. Um, and both countries, and Europe as well, USA and the UK, over the last few decades, um, gone through a lot of development, historical. I mean, I'm thinking here, I'm just picking out one or two really. Um, Rosa Parks in 1955 when she sat on the bus in the wrong seat. And even though the Civil War had been won, the racism um, that existed around the world, both in America and in Britain, absolutely. In Britain, at that time in the 1950s, there were signs in windows as we took in immigrants from, let's say, the West Indies, there would be a sign in the window that said, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. I mean, it's quite outrageous to think that that was the case and it was legal to do so. Now it is illegal to do so. Um, in the 80s, I think it was, we had race riots because of terrible things that were going on. Um, and then we had uh, multiculturalism get thrown into the mix which sort of did and didn't work uh, so we're in a long process of coming to terms with the diversity of the human race now my premise is this we are one race we are unified we are one human race on one planet we're spinning through space in this one space vehicle and we're all in it together just think for a moment, you know, the, uh, the crew of the USS Enterprise in Star Trek. Brilliant setting back in the 60s of putting so many different types of people from different countries in the one crew. It was so much ahead of its time. It was brilliant. Anyway, that aside, um, we are still a long, long way from really understanding the way to 
organise ourselves. Now, I'm not going to talk politics. I'm forbidden to do so because of my faith. My faith is I'm a Baha'i, I'm a follower of the Baha'i faith. I want just to lean on the positivity and the definition of unity. And we can touch upon, if you don't have that unity, the terrible things that emerge from that. So, um, it's fascinating to me to find that um, there is a large number of the American population who are Christian and that the Christian principles and teachings include the likes of this. And I'm reading this, I'm just parts of um, the letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, um, about love. You all know it extremely well. I'm not going to read all of it, but just me pick out a couple of bits if I may. Uh, Though I speak in tongues of men and angels, but not have love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So, love. What is meant by this love? If I have love, I am nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Does not love Love does not parade itself. He's not puffed up. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And just before that, in uh, verse 10, it says... But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Not quite sure what that means, but let me just throw in a thought that if you were to consider if Jesus were here, returned, what would he say? What would his message be? And this is something that many Christians are expecting, hoping for, what would it be? Let me suggest that it might be this, and this is just one little quote. The well-being of mankind, its peace and security, are unattainable unless and until its unity is firmly established. Now the significance of that word unity is paramount. Now, unity doesn't mean uniformity. We're not all the same. But we are human beings on one planet. It is a global society. And our technology has enabled us to see that very, very clearly. So we cannot lean on nationalism and say, our country has got to be first. Which is exactly the message that David Attenborough put forward recently in some of his programmes about the state of the environment, for instance. Likewise the economy, likewise the COVID-19. We are in it together. We are all got to work together, which is why the World Health Organization is such an important aspect of the fight against diseases of various sorts, um, which is why the Paris Accord is vitally important that countries work together to fight the environmental damage that is being done by climate change which is it seems apparently showing itself in wildfires extra hurricanes uh, flooding we're getting flooding droughts the climate change and the weather is just outrageous at the moment you cannot stand alone and say that doesn't occur the weather belongs to everybody. Storms don't go to the edge of a country and stop. We've got to work together on these environmental issues. It's absolutely vital. The well-being of mankind is dependent upon this unity of approach to things. Now, globalism is seen to be a dirty word. I don't know why. All right, we're not in a perfect situation and global politics is a bit strange, I admit. But you cannot just stand up on your own and just say, we are it, that's it, forget the rest. It will not work. 
We've got to do things collectively. We've got to do things globally. We've got to have a global approach to all these problems. I'm thinking the future might be pointing in the right direction. I hope so. I think it's promised that it will. But we may have a way to go yet, and it may get worse before it gets better. Let's hope not. But anyway, enough said. As somebody else said, just a thought. See you next time.